So as the title of the video suggests, I wanna talk about draw length and how you can find the correct draw length for you. And first of all, before we get started, I want you to let me know whether or not you move your clicker when you go between different distances. So let me know in the comments below whether when you move from blank boss, close range, maybe to 50 meters, 70 meters, whether you move your clicker or not. Let me know in the comments below for that. So you've probably heard the common metric for measuring draw length between the knock of the arrow and the pivot point of the grip and then adding one and three quarter inches to this length. So that is the official definition of draw length and that is what you will see in many manuals and stuff like that. But this actually isn't a very important measurement other than just for choosing which size of bow you're going to shoot. So the draw length will determine what size of bow will be optimum for you. But other than that, you don't really ever need to know your draw length. It's more important for tuning to know your specific arrow length because that's what affects how the arrow tunes. And once you're quite experienced, you probably won't even know what your draw length is. I have no idea what my specific draw length is anymore. I just know that it's something more than 29 inches and it means that I need a 70 inch bow. Once you know that, you only then need to know your arrow length and your arrow spine and stuff like that for tuning. So why exactly is the draw length important then and how do you find your draw length when you shoot a recurve bow that can move around everywhere? Now the reason the draw length isn't important for tuning is because you can be shooting the same shot and have the same draw length but you can have different arrow lengths and you just move your clicker and obviously this will change the tuning. You know, you shoot the same shot here but maybe you have a 29 inch arrow and then maybe you can have a 30 inch arrow and just move the clicker. Your tuning will be different, but your draw length has actually remained the same. You've just changed your arrow length. So this is why the draw length isn't really used for measuring how you tune the bow and calculating anything like that. It's actually just a measure to see how far you're drawing in terms of your actual technique. Now getting the right draw length is crucial because basically if you can get to a consistent place consistent anchor and real full draw position with a consistent draw length, you're much more likely to be able to expand in the same way, create a good release every time and a good follow through every time. So simply consistent draw length and the right draw length for you will be more consistent shots and more consistent grouping. And it's as simple as that really. So that's why getting the right draw length is important and why you have to make sure that you don't just conform to the clicker without checking that your draw length is correct. To start with, I want to show you some of the symptoms of too long a draw length and too short a draw length. And this will help you understand how you can then get the correct draw length for you and maybe identify if you are overdrawing or underdrawing at the moment. So we'll start with the symptoms of overdrawing first. Now, a classic example of a symptom of being overdrawn is a lack of flexibility past the clicker. So if you were to ask an archer to do something like the clicker expansion drill or the extension past the clicker, they wouldn't be able to extend the arrow past the clicker very far and there would almost be no flexibility past this point. So it's almost like that clicker is set as far back as they can get it and there's no more room to expand or move past that amount. So if you were in the correct position, the correct full draw length and the correct draw length, you would expect to be able to expand three to five millimeters past the clicker. So if you can't do that, then possibly you might be overdrawn. Another common symptom of being overdrawn is feeling like there's nowhere to go once you're at full draw. There can be other causes for this, but this is why you have to look at all the other parts of the shot as well. But often when an archer says they feel like there's nowhere to go, there's no room to expand, they can't get through the clicker, Things of that nature are often because of being overdrawn. So it's definitely worth looking at the draw length and the clicker position for that. Finally, another symptom of being overdrawn is having an arched back and sacrificing the posture and arching the back in an attempt to draw and expand through the clicker. Because when the posture is maintained, when you're in this nice position, the posture is maintained and the back is flat, the draw length isn't quite long enough to expand the arrow through the clicker. So what will actually happen a lot of the time is the archer might make some adjustment in other areas of their technique, such as the posture mainly, to basically get through the clicker. Your body is very clever and it will do anything to get through the clicker if that is your goal and you're just rigidly sticking 
to the clicker position that you've got. So I'll just demonstrate that with a bow now and show you what that looks like. So first of all, I'll come to full draw into a normal position and then I will exaggerate the movement and trying to get through the clicker and pretend I'm trying to do that while sacrificing the posture and maybe you can see what that looks like. So you would come up to full draw and then often when someone is struggling they might end up overdrawing like that and then as you do that as you overdraw you're sacrificing the core you're losing the core and arching the back and that's not what you want to do so this is why you have to make sure that posture is a priority and you have to regularly check your clicker position position and your draw length now one symptom of being underdrawn is the clicker going off too early coming to full draw and the clicker clicking before you've got time to get to your anchor position and real full draw so this is quite an obvious one but it's important to make note of this and make sure that you don't then compromise your technique more. What will often happen is, like I said before, your body is clever. So if you are drawing the bow and you click early and on the next shot you haven't changed anything and you haven't registered that, your body will compromise your technique a lot of the time to make sure you don't click early again. So imagine you're underdrawn, you draw the bow, and then as you get to hit, as you get to here, it clicks, and then you've basically clicked early. What your body will do on the next shot, a lot of the time, is to compromise a part of your technique so that you don't click early. So what often happens is the bow shoulder, when you're drawing, you might sacrifice the bow shoulder slightly in order to shorten the draw length, and then, lo and behold, you don't click early anymore, but what's happened is you've made your alignment worse, your posture's worse, other areas of your technique are worse, basically to compromise for the fact that your clicker is in the wrong position. So this is something really important and something to be aware of. Another symptom of being underdrawn is no feeling of being at real full draw. No feeling of being inside the bow and kind of a feeling of floating and not being able to get a consistent expansion direction. If you're at the correct draw length, you should be in a secure position at full draw and when you expand, you should be able to do, feel like you're doing it consistently and in the same way each time. Whereas if you're underdrawn, a lot of the times the alignment will be bad and it might look something like this would be a good position. And then being underdrawn, there might be some lack of alignment here and the position of the draw elbow might be further round. So when you expand then, this whole hand and this whole unit feels more floating, doesn't feel secure against the jawline, the expansion doesn't feel as good round the body, and this is another symptom that you haven't quite got that correct draw length for you. Finally, another symptom of being underdrawn is not being able to create a explosive release and follow through. If you're underdrawn, the forces of your expansion won't be as aligned or they won't be as easy to get aligned, and your release will basically be much softer and not as aggressive. And even if you try really hard, you won't be able to get it aggressive. And very often, maybe the bow arm will fade to the right, the bow arm might drop, the release might come outwards, those kind of things. So if you're in the right position and you're at the correct draw length, then you would be able to expand and release and follow through in a nice motion and an aggressive motion. If you're underdrawn, with the expansion, you might see something where you kind of shoot soft or the release comes outwards and there's not enough direction in the correct movements. So this is something to look out for as well. Now, a couple of things to note and make sure you're aware of. If you are a beginner or a young archer or someone who's changing your structural areas of your shot, large parts of your shot, such as alignment and posture, your draw length will change and you have to adapt to this and not just stick with your clicker position that you've set already. For instance, if your posture has been arched like this for ages and you've possibly been overdrawn and now you want to correct your posture and maintain it, what will probably happen is your draw length will decrease slightly because of the posture change. Further down the line, what then might happen is when you improve your alignment, the draw length might increase slightly because if you work on your alignment, if you improve, if you have your shoulder line, if you start with the shoulder line like this and then you improve to moving round, obviously your alignment is going to increase and improve and your draw length is going to increase a lot as well. 
So big structural changes will increase your draw length or they'll change your draw length, sorry. So you definitely need to be aware of this and not expect to just be, you know, I have a draw length now, my height hasn't changed, my arm length hasn't changed, so then my draw length is gonna stay the same forever. It doesn't really work like that. It depends on your technique. Something I want to note as well is that if you're overbowed and if your bow mass weight is too heavy, it's quite likely you'll be underdrawing because you're not strong enough to get into the full draw position that you need to be and you're not strong enough to maintain specifically the bow shoulder position as well. What's very common is if the bow mass weight and the draw weight is too heavy, you'll often see the bow shoulder compromise like I talked about and this will decrease your draw length. But there's one other important thing to note and that is sometimes it can look like you're overdrawing but you're actually underdrawing and I'll show you why. So imagine you're a bit overbowed, the bow is too strong for you and maybe there's too much mass weight as well. So what often happens is the alignment is compromised but you might also compromise your posture and arch your back. So I'll demonstrate this now. What you often see, and this might look a bit bad, I'll, I'll, try, I'll try, and get it, try and get it correct. So what you might see is the bow shoulder being compromised and coming into the body like this. And then because of that, the archer then is trying to get through the clicker and trying to keep the air alignment. So what they do is they then sacrifice the posture, lean back and arch the back. So it might look something like this. Now, with that leaning back, it's very easy to look at the archer or, or look at someone that's doing that and say they're overdrawing. They're clearly leaning back. They're clearly not keeping their posture. Their back is arched. They're leaning away from the target. They must be overdrawing. But actually, once you fix the important things in the shot with the alignment, the posture, the position at full draw, then actually you will increase the draw length. It looks like you might need to decrease the draw length just from the posture, but the bow shoulder is, is making the whole shot hard, and then this affects the other parts of the shot. So it's important to draw the distinction there and identify how exactly you're going to change the draw length and why this is the case. So let's talk about how to find your correct draw length. The best way to do this is to draw up that close range blank boss with an arrow in the bow, with your eyes closed, and either have a video camera aimed at your clicker and your arrow on the bow, or have someone look at this and be behind you like another archer or a coach. So you can draw up, you get your bow with the arrow in, you draw up at close range with your eyes closed, and then you come up and do your full shot cycle. You come up, you open and raise the bow, you get to set up, you reach anchor, you reach real full draw, you do your expansion, and as you're doing all that, you're videoing it or getting your coach or archer to look at it. And then you, if it's an archer that's doing it, they can mark on your bow where your average position was just before your expansion. And if you're watching on the video, you can obviously see this. Then you would do this a minimum of three to six times. If you're more experienced, three times is good. If you're a beginner, definitely at least six times. You would do that and then you can see an average position. Now importantly, you need to do this on three separate days during the week that are spread out. Not three days together, but maybe you know the first day of the week, third day of the week, fifth day of the week, whatever, to get a consistent reading and see where your average position is. The less experienced you are, the more readings you need to do to get an average position, and the more experienced you are, the less you need to do, obviously. But it's really important to do this because this will help you find the correct position for you at the moment. So that's a way to find your correct draw length at the moment. But what's important to remember, as I said before, is if you're working on technique areas, or if you're a junior that's growing a lot, your draw length will change. And what very often happens is the draw length changes because maybe alignment's improved, maybe you've grown, stuff like that. Maybe you cut down some new arrows, but you didn't quite cut them down the right length. Maybe you change your grip you know, things like that. So it's really important to very regularly, at least once a week, check your draw length by shooting without the clicker. And this is really, really good to do as a general exercise anyway, and I'd recommend doing this at close range blank boss. So every so often, just shooting without the clicker, and then once you then put the clicker back on the bow, you come up and shoot, 
you can then realize if you're then shooting the same way with the clicker, the draw length is correct and you're able to expand through the shot, that's great. But if you shoot without the clicker, and then when you shoot with the clicker, you have to expand a centimeter and it feels like you're having to do the wrong movement, then you've probably got your clicker in the wrong position. So it's a great exercise to do regularly, especially when you're making technique changes to get a correct position for your draw length so that you don't just conform to the clicker. That's probably the number one mistake I see in terms of draw length and clicker position is just sticking the clicker in the same position and just leaving it there for ages and ages and ages, even though you've changed other parts of your shot. So I definitely make sure to do that regularly. Finally, one top tip for you is that many archers, including myself, do actually move the clicker for different distances. So my clicker at close range blank boss for five to 10 meters is normally two to three millimeters further into the bow because my draw length is slightly long longer it's further into the bow than it is at 70 meters. So when I move between the distances, when I move to 70 meters, I will move my clicker out two to three millimeters because of the angle. And this is something you should not be afraid to do as well because the angle does change the draw length slightly and you need to be able to expand in the correct way and get the correct shot. So it's something that you can play around with to find the correct feeling at 70 meters because often people can get the correct feeling at blank boss, but then at 70 meters, everything feels too difficult. They struggle through the clicker, stuff like that. So I wouldn't be afraid to move the clicker a small amount between distances. So that was an overview of recurve draw length and how you can find the correct draw length for you. I hope you found that video useful and let me know in the comments below whether or not you moved your clicker between different distances already, like I mentioned at the start of the video. As always, be sure to smash that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I'll also put the links to social media down below and thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.